one day he just expired. No car accident, no external source, no great illness. And so people needed to find a reason. But as news spread throughout the world, so did rumors that his death was no accident. Had he been murdered, some wondered? The target of retaliation by angry Hong Kong gangs? Some even speculated that Lee had been killed by a curse imposed by Asian martial arts masters, still angry that he had revealed their secrets to non-Asians. As far as, uh, uh, you know, rumors of a curse or rumors of this and that, it's, there's just no bearing. I mean, uh, I suppose when, when someone passes away, you can say whatever you want. You know, you could say he was done in by gremlins, but there's equal evidence for gremlins as there is, is for a curse. An autopsy revealed the cause of Lee's death to be cerebral edema, or swelling of the brain, an allergic reaction to the pill he had taken to alleviate his headache. The scientific medical evidence was extremely clear. Uh, so, you may call it a freak accident, but uh, absolutely nothing else. Within days, more than 20,000 mourners crowded the streets of Hong Kong to pay their respects to the fallen superstar. Following a memorial service, his body was taken to Seattle, where Bruce and his wife had met and fallen in love. Among those at the funeral were close friends James Coburn and Steve McQueen, who served as pallbearers. At the age of only 32, Bruce Lee had left behind a wife, two children, and an unrivaled legacy in the world of entertainment and martial arts. But ironically, it would be the films in which he didn't appear where his legend would live on. Biography's look at Bruce Lee will continue on A&E. You're watching Bruce Lee on Biography. In a desperate effort to salvage Bruce Lee's last film, the producers hired a lookalike actor and resorted to obvious and at times laughable camera tricks. Cut! Okay, that's a print. That was great, Billy. Okay, everybody, get the <laughs> But mixed results couldn't prevent Game of Death from being an enormous financial success. On the strength of five films, Bruce Lee had forever redefined the action movie genre and opened the doors for martial arts superstars like Jackie Chan, Chuck Norris, Steven Seagal, and Jean-Claude Van Damme. Just about everybody now who does action resorts to some form of karate or kickboxing or something like that. But of all the actors who dared fill the fallen star's footprints, the one with the greatest chance seemed to be Bruce's only son, Brandon. I'm a weird question to me when people ask me about, you know, following in my father's footsteps. Because if by that you mean doing really excellent films and uh, doing the kind of work that my father did, doing that, that quality of work, that level of work, absolutely, you know, absolutely that's what I want to do. But if you mean trying to imitate him in some way, you know, trying to... Uh, uh, be a poor man's Bruce Lee, not at all. I started learning martial arts with my dad right about the time I could walk. And we moved from, from Hong Kong to Los Angeles a lot when I was growing up as we were following my father's career around. And the thing is, I always think to myself, no matter what happens to me in my career, it's probably never going to get as weird as it already was. Having made a name for himself in a small number of modestly successful films, the young actor seemed poised on the brink of superstardom as the title character in the supernatural thriller, The Crow. But on March 31, 1993, nearly 20 years after his father's untimely death, Brandon Lee was accidentally killed on the set by the misfiring of an unchecked prop gun. And like Game of Death, the Crow was completed with the aid of body doubles and special effects. Unfortunately, the bizarre circumstances surrounding Brandon Lee's death 
did little to quell the ever-growing myths about a mysterious curse. With Brandon's death, there was a resurgence of the rumors about Bruce's death. There was a rehashing of them in the public again. And there was an attempt to connect the deaths of Bruce and Brandon. And really, that's a great disservice and a great tragedy trying to connect it up with uh, curses and falsehoods and rumors is not right. Brandon's death was the result of the most unfortunate and unlikely freakish chain of events than that could ever be imagined. In a way, I'm glad that Bruce was not here to see this happen to Brandon, because it would have hurt him so badly, as it has all of us. To millions around the world, the name Bruce Lee looms larger than ever. Magazines continue to print articles about him. Fan clubs are devoted to him and his martial arts philosophy continues to attract a growing number of devoted followers. One of the most amazing things from my perspective on Bruce Lee was that a man of 32 years of age could be so prolific. He created a new film genre, he created a self-help philosophy, which is absolutely uh, brilliant, and he created a new martial art, you know, which people have been carrying on since his passing. So the important thing about Bruce Lee is not how he died or that he died, it's that he lived. To me, he's still alive, his spirit's still there, and we still train his, in his art. He's probably the best friend you can have. Uh, he's very loyal. Uh, he once told me that if somebody is trying to attack you, I'll take them on. That's a friend. The integrity with which Bruce lived his life, what he believed to be right, uh, that is a clear example of the way it should be done. I, I remember uh, he said, all right, if I'm gone f for any reason, uh, don't get hooked up with all these people that are, they're going to be giving me parades. If they're giving me parades, something's wrong. He was definitely somebody to look up to and something to aspire to. He had such a passion for life. I strive to have as much passion. If I could, like, rewind time and do it all over again, I would have asked so many more questions and learned so much more. He certainly left a gift for the rest of us, a path to follow, footsteps to follow, so that we can start in a direction and then find our own way, which was his lesson. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Be water, my friend. Brandon Lee's death came just one month before the release of a movie about his father called Dragon, the Bruce Lee Story. The movie was produced with the cooperation of Bruce's widow, Linda, who insisted the premiere go forward as scheduled. But she did request one addition to the closing credits. At the very end of Dragon, there is a quote from St. Augustine. The key to immortality is first living a life worth remembering. Father and son are now buried side by side. Their gravesite in Seattle has become a major attraction for movie fans and martial artists around the world. Next on a &E, our biography of Jackie Chan, who idolized Bruce Lee, and then followed a similar road to stardom. Stay with us. Tomorrow night, enjoy a portrait of a musical great that is truly unforgettable. Nat King Cole on an all-new biography at 8 Eastern, 9 Pacific. Now, Jackie Chan is the biography special presentation next on a &E.